In this video, we're going to review graphing linear equations in slope intercept and standard form. So first, slope intercept. Taking a look at this first example here, y equals 4 thirds x minus 3. It's very easy when an equation is in slope intercept form to identify the slope and the y intercept because the slope is the coefficient of x, so in this case, 4 thirds, and the y intercept is the constant behind x, so in this case, negative 3. So when we graph, the y-intercept is represented by the letter b. Think of that as meaning begin. So where are we going to begin? We're going to begin at negative 3 on the y-axis. So we're going to put a point at negative 3 on the y-axis, and then think of the m for slope as meaning move. We're going to move the way the slope tells us to move. So remember, our slope is rise over run. And the rise tells us how a line moves up or down. And the run tells us how we move from left to right. So here, since this slope is positive, this 4 is telling us to move up 4. And the 3 tells us to move to the right 3, always to the right. OK, so the slope of 4 thirds, we're going to move. And we're going to begin at negative 3 on the y-intercept. So we're going to move up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and right 3, 1, 2, 3. And here we place our new point. And I actually have room to do it again, so I'm going to go ahead and move again. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. And there is our new point for the slope. And so now all we got to do is take our straight edge, line up the points, and draw our line. And notice that I'm extending my line all the way through the points. So this line right here is the graph of the linear equation y equals 4 thirds x minus 3. All right, let's take a look at this second example here. We see y equals negative 2 fifths x minus 2. So in this second example here, our slope is negative. So that's negative 2 fifths. And our y-intercept is negative 2. So once again, we are going to begin at negative 2 on the y-axis. And then we're going to move the way the slope tells us to move. Since this slope is negative, that means that we're going to move down 2, and still write 5. So I'm going to move down 2, 1, 2, and write 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You always move to the right. The only time you move to the left is if you run out of room and you have to work backwards, and I will show you an example of that. So you connect your points with a straight edge, and you extend all the way through. And so here's our graph of the linear equation, y equals negative 2 fifths x minus 2. All right, taking a look at our next example here, y equals negative 2x plus 2. We see that our slope is negative 2, and our y-intercept is positive 2. So we are going to begin with our y-intercept. So we're going to place a point at positive 2 on our y-axis, and then we're going to move the way the slope tells us to move. This slope is a negative 2. Remember that slope is a fraction. So negative 2 comes from the fraction negative 2 over 1. And since it's negative, that means move down 2 and write 1. So from my y-intercept, I'm going to move down 2, 1, 2, and write 1. There's a new point, And I have room. As long as I have room, I like to keep placing points. So down 2, 1, 2, write 1. Again, 1, 2, write 1. And one more time. 1, 2, right 1. Then line up your straight edge and graph your line. So right here is the graph of the linear equation y equals negative 2x plus 2. Next example, y equals 1 fourth x plus 4. So this time our slope is the fraction 1 fourth. And our y-intercept is positive 4. Again, we begin with our y-intercept. So I'm going to place a point on positive 4 on the y-axis. And then we're going to move the way the slope tells us to move. So this slope tells us to, since it's positive, to move up one step and to the right four steps. So from my y-intercept, I'm going to move up one step and to the right four steps. One, two, three, four. Now, I mentioned that you always move to the right. 
and that you never move to the left unless you run out of room and you have to work backwards. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like, okay? So say for example, you don't like placing just two points. You like to have three or more points, right? Well, I don't have room to keep, to move up one and right four anymore on this graph. So if I want a third point, I actually have to go back here and move this way. So if you run out of room and you wanna place another point, or sometimes you may not even have room to place one point following the slope, then what you're gonna do is go backwards, which means you're gonna do the exact opposite of this. So if the slope of one fourth means move up one and right four, the exact opposite of that would be down one and left four. And you're gonna see how that ends up lining up perfectly. So from my y-intercept, if I move down one, left four, one, two, three, four, you'll see how this point lines up with the other two points. So that is how going backwards or doing the exact opposite is the same as moving the way the slope tells you to move. So that is the only time you're gonna move left is if you run out of space and you need to work backwards. But when you do have room and you're moving slope, you always move to the right. Positive means move up, negative means move down. So let me go ahead and get my straight edge and draw my graph. And there is the graph of the linear equation, y equals 1 fourth x plus 4. Let me go ahead and take this moment to show you another example of when you might need to work backwards. So if I look at this equation here, y equals 3x plus 4, notice that my slope is 3 and my y-intercept is 4. So again, we're going to begin with the y-intercept. So I'm going to place a point on positive 4 on the y-axis, and then we're going to move the way the slope tells us to move. So this slope is positive 3, which comes from the fraction 3 over 1, which means move up 3 steps and to the right 1. However, I can't do that here because I don't have room. I only have two more grid lines left on my graph and you're not gonna do this thing where you draw extra grid lines and mark. So I cannot move up three and write one because I don't have room. So I have no other choice but to go backwards here. So since I have to go backwards, I'm gonna do the exact opposite of up three, write one, which would mean down three, left one. So I'm gonna go down three, one, two, three, and left one, and I get that point there. And again, one, two, three, and left one, and I could do it one more time. One, two, three, and left one. Now, so that you see again how this works, if I start at this point and I move up three, right one, which is what the slope says, you see up three, one, two, three, right one, I end up back on this point. If I do it again, one, two, three, right one, one, two, three, right one. So hopefully you can see here what the purpose of the going backwards and doing the exact opposite is. Connect the straight edge and draw my line. Again, the only time you move left is if you run out of room and you have to work backwards. All right, taking a look at this next example, this equation is not in slope-intercept form. Remember that slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, which means that in slope-intercept form, y should be the only thing to the left of the equal sign, and then everything else should be to the right of the equal sign in the order of mx plus b. So in this case, we see that y is to the left, but who's in the wrong spot? 5x. It's on the left side and it should be on the right side right after the equal sign. So how are we going to convert this to slope-intercept form? Well, first we need to take this 5x and move it where it belongs, which we can do just like this. We're just going to take it and drag it over and place it here. The only thing we need to remember is whenever you take something from one side of an equation and move it across the equal sign to the other side, you have to change the sign. So this positive 5x is going to become a negative 5x, and it's gonna look like this. 2y 
equals negative 5x plus 4. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it over here so I have room to work it out so I could finish the process. So 2y equals negative 5x plus 4. And I need to now solve this to get y by itself. So I need to divide everything by 2. So 2y divided by 2 is y. Negative 5x divided by 2 becomes negative 5 over 2x. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. So now we have our slope and our y-intercept. So our slope in this case is negative 5 over 2 and our y-intercept is positive 2. Once again, we're going to begin on our y-intercept. So we're going to go to the y-axis and place a point on positive 2. Then we're going to move the way the slope tells us. The slope is negative, so that means down 5 and right 2. So here we go. We, we begin at positive 2, down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and right 2, 1, 2. And there is our second point. And so we're going to take our straight edge and draw our line. Again, remember, always extend all the way through. And there is the graph of the equation 5x plus 2y equals 4, which when we convert it to slope-intercept form becomes y equals negative 5 over 2x plus 2. All right, in this next example here, we see we have the same situation. This equation is not in slope-intercept form, and the culprit is x. x is on the left, and it should be on the right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this x. Now remember, there's an invisible coefficient of 1 here. And we're going to move it, and it's going to go right here in between the equal sign and the negative 8. So remember that this is a positive 1x, and since we're moving it across the equal sign, it's going to become a negative 1x. And that's going to look like this. Negative 2y equals negative 1x minus 8. I'm going to copy it here in the middle so we have room to finish the process. Now, what we need to do, again, to solve for y and put this in y-intercept is to divide everything by negative 2. So negative 2y divided by negative 2, that is y. Negative 1x divided by negative 2 is positive half x. And negative 8 divided by negative 2 is positive 4. So now we have our slope which is positive half, and we have our y-intercept, which is positive 4. So again, we begin with our y-intercept. We place a point on positive 4 on the y-axis, and we move the way the slope tells us. This is a positive slope, so that is up 1 and right 2. So from the y-intercept, up 1, right 2, and once again, up 1, right 2. And we take our straight edge, Line up the points and extend all throughout. And there is our graph. All right, last two examples here. We see this equation 5x plus y equals negative 5. Once again, this is not in slope-intercept form, and the culprit is 5x. So we need to take this 5x, and we need to place it right here in between the equal sign and the negative 5. And when it moves, it becomes a negative 5x. So this is going to look like this y equals negative 5x minus 5. And since the coefficient of y is a 1, that's it. We don't need to do anything else. It's already in slope-intercept form. So we know that our slope is negative 5, and our y-intercept is also negative 5. So we're going to begin with our y-intercept. We're going to place a point at negative 5 on the y-axis, and then we're going to move the way the slope tells us to move. Now this slope is a negative 5, that comes from the fraction negative 5 over 1, which means move down 5 and write 1. However, we don't have room to move down 5. So this is one of those situations where we're going to have to work backwards. It's the only time you move left is when you have to work backwards. So the exact opposite of down 5, right 1 is going to be up 5, left 1. 
So again, starting from my y-intercept, I'm going to go up five, one, two, three, four, five, and left one, and place a point here, and I have room to do it again, so I'm going to go ahead. Up five, one, two, three, four, five, and left one. And again, remember, the reason why this works is if I move from this point and I go down five, right one, which is what the slope tells me, I end up at the next point. Again, down five, right one, you see how that works. So you connect your straight edge and extend your line in both directions. And there's our graph. In our final example here, we have 3x minus 2y equals negative 6. So again, we need to take the 3x and we need to move it right here. So that is going to be negative 2y equals positive 3x becomes a negative 3x minus 6. Let me copy it over here so I have room to work. I need to divide everything by negative 2 to solve for y. So I get y equals negative 3x divided by negative 2 becomes positive 3 over 2x minus 3. So our slope is 3 over 2 and our y-intercept is negative 3. We begin at our y-intercept, negative 3, and we're going to move our slope, which is positive, so that is up 3, right 2. So here we go, up 3, 1, 2, 3, right 2, place a point. One more time, 1, 2, 3, right 2, and I can do it one more time. One, two, three, right two. Connect the straight edge and extend our line all the way through. All right. I hope that this helps you understand how to graph linear equations in slope, intercept, and standard form.